primary weapons of Battlefield V's support class. How well do they work in game? How do they look and feel? And most importantly, which ones do I play favorites for? Good morning folks, I'm Professor Mem, and today I bring you the fourth entry in my All Battlefield V Weapons Ranked series. If you haven't already, check out the other ones I made on sidearms, assault primaries, and medic primaries. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Maybe you're a support main or something. Also, I'd like to add a preface due to some comments I got on Reddit when I posted my last video there. First of all, I'd like to thank those commenters for interacting with my posts, being well-mannered, and complimenting the video's quality. But more pressingly, I want to express that my rankings have very little to do overtly with how good a weapon is. I put this disclaimer at the front of my ranking videos, and I try to keep a relatively unserious tone throughout, because when I put a gun in S tier, it isn't usually just because it has excellent stats, but because I think it both looks and feels appealing in gameplay, and quite possibly it has a gameplay niche that I'm partial to. Because I make no effort to hide the fact that I am a contrarian hipster special snowflake, there will be at least one time in this video that I rank an objectively strong weapon low for personal reasons. While this video may be educational stats-wise, I did not make it to tell you which guns are best. And if you're watching this, you probably already know what's best, especially for you. So if I rate something you think is really strong low, it's not because I don't know what I'm talking about. I just don't like it as much. That being said, I'd gladly invite criticism and I'd love to hear your favorite weapons and the reasons you like them that aren't necessarily based in pragmatism. Anyhow, I'm sure you'd like me to proceed, so I will. Now, what's first here? KE-7. Kind of like with Assault, I find the KE-7 to be a strange pick for a starting weapon. I mean, what the hell even is a KE-7? I've never seen or heard of one outside of this game. Not that it really matters, I just think it's an obscure first pick for an LMG. LMGs are like the other automatic weapon classes, mostly taking four shots to kill at close range. They have wider hipfire spread than submachine guns and assault rifles, but their bullets generally travel faster and have slightly better damage retention. All LMGs also come equipped with a bipod. The effect these bipods can have on control and accuracy is a great boon to LMGs, as their recoil usually tends to be greater by default. Any automatic fire is useful in close range, and bipods serve to give these weapons the edge in longer range firefights or defensive positions. This is also the reason that LMGs are the only possible class of automatic weapon that I widely endorse using a 3x scope on. Assault rifles typically aren't worth it, SMGs, I would if I could, but only on a few. And MMGs? Oh, you bet your ass a good number of mine would be rocking three times, but we'll get to that. The specializations the KE-7 has at the start of the game include enhanced grips and light bolt, and for once I can get behind this. It doesn't bring the fire rate up that much, and there's nothing you're really missing out on in the other specialization path. Being a higher RPM LMG with better hip fire makes it pretty good in close quarters. One thing to note is that neither reload animation displays the player charging the weapon, despite the big obvious charging handle. In fact, the partial and empty reloads are the same. This isn't an oversight, but rather a feature of the actual gun, as it is an open bolt system with a hold open mechanism after the last shot, similar to the Tommy gun with stick mags. That being said, this gun doesn't really have anything interesting about it. From a design standpoint, a hold open is good, but when that results in only one reload animation and me not getting to yank on the massive charging handle, I'm gonna get aesthetic blue balls. Plus, primacy bias has a negative effect on hipsters like me. So yeah. F tier, boring weapon. It's not really that bad, but I use it close to never. Model 37. The Model 37 is the first shotgun on our list, and yeah, the shotguns in this game behave how you would expect they do in any other game. To me it really stands out how the shotguns in this game seem stronger and more close quarters centric than the shotguns in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 2042. The support class is the only one to get shotguns in Battlefield 5, and I figure that explains why they have the most guns of any class. It puzzled me for the longest time why support has 21 guns, where the rest only have 16. Well, it turns out that support has exactly 5 shotguns. Funny, that. I'd say it's a fair choice to have them here to diversify support's loadout, because while MMGs have glaring differences with other weapon classes, they are unsurprisingly closest to LMGs. But we'll touch on that subject a few entries down. Shotguns. Shotguns are fun. Sometimes they don't seem fair, and on some maps they're not. But when you see most of Battlefield's 64 player maps, there are plenty of places for shotgun users to be caught shit out of luck. Which is why I can kind of respect people using shotguns on those more open space oriented maps. Although we all know that next to nobody does this. But you just know that you can expect to get blown away by them on Aerodrome and Operation Underground. Model 37, however, is the most common and least respectable. But why is that? 
It fires the fastest of all shotguns aside from the M30, and I don't even know if I should count that on account of the two shell capacity, and it can fire in quote unquote automatic when in hip fire. This is justified by its real counterpart having the feature of slam fire. Never mind the same courtesy isn't extended to the M1897. Anyhow, it fires really fast, but it does less damage. At least that's what the stat screen shows. So it's balanced, right? Wrong. Once again, the stats are lying to you. And once I looked into the matter myself, I found that I was right all along about something I had been suspecting for quite some time. The Model 37 does more max damage than all of the other shotguns. All other shotguns except for the drilling do 7.2 damage per pellet times 32 pellets. The Model 37 does 11.2 damage, also times 32 pellets. The Model 37 can do over 100 more damage off of one trigger pull, in addition to firing faster. However, as shotguns in games tend to, it becomes very weak beyond a short distance. Past 6 meters, that damage value takes an immediate nosedive to just 3 per pellet, and then 2 per pellet across a longer distance, but that difference is much less important. This dramatic drop-off happens on all shotguns, but at different ranges. The M37 6 meters is the shortest range, because I guess you can't have everything. All shotguns have the heavy load specialization as an option, which gives a flat 2 meter lethal range extension on all shotguns, suffice to say that it's a damn solid pick. It seems that shotgun damage is ranked by the effective range rather than actual damage per trigger pull, which if you ask me is a pretty flimsy standard stats wise. It's deceptive, and I can't even fathom the train of thought that justified giving the Model 37 godlike damage, but as long as the stat bar on screen is validated by something. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Wow, all this talk and I haven't even mentioned how I personally feel about using the thing. Verdict? Yeah, it's fun. I feel kind of cheap getting so many kills, but it feels more rewarding to bring it to those wide open maps where nobody expects it, and position yourself in a way to bait unsuspecting players and make the most of your extreme short range advantage. Not to mention that the option for a bayonet, while utterly pointless here, is still fun. Not much to speak of in terms of looks, save for the heat shield that's a very plain looking shotgun, and that doesn't even come stock. You need to get the bayonet specialization to have it. Expectedly fun to use, but I have a hard time reconciling the conflict of the fun I have with the fact that I feel dirty. E tier. Meanwhile, most of these guys are over here like, there is no conflict. Type 97 MG, or Japanese Bren. Because it's an LMG with a top mounted box mag, that makes it a Bren, right? Now, this is the first light machine gun that I recommend using a scope with. The low rate of fire makes it easy to control, but most importantly, look at it. That is one hell of a heckin' chonkin' scope. Even the weapon's icon has the scope attached. It's how the game was meant to be played. So much scope for so little magnification, though. Also, that mag blocks your view when using iron sights, and that goes for all of them that have this feature. Maybe that's not a concern for you, but for me it's just plain annoying. Not to mention, all of these LMGs with a fire rate under 600 are pretty much what I would call marksman's machine guns, not to be confused with medium machine guns, and are deserving of a scope. Because even without the use of a bipod, they can make good use of the three times magnification. Though with a bipod and scope, you can outrange most things. Accuracy can be pushed even further if you want to try single shots. The way I have it spec'd, the Type 97 is my most statistically accurate LMG. I have to concede, however, that these light machine guns tend to have more recoil than competing weapon classes with the same fire rates. This is to offset their better ballistics. Especially with greater magnification, this can make hitting targets in close range with these lower fire rates a bit of a challenge, or the scope can cause you to overextend your shooting while standing up. In general, it seems harder for me to perform accurate automatic fire with all LMGs without the bipod, but it's using the bipod that brings things back into balance, because while it requires you to stay in one place, it makes a big difference. The magazine capacity of the Type 97 is a slightly low 25 rounds, but if you use the accuracy you're given, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Stranger is the fact that you start with much less ammunition than you would for any other gun. Usually support always spawns with maximum ammo because, duh, they can always get free ammo anyways. But that's not the case for this gun, for some reason. The Type 97 has some interesting things to look at. A finned barrel, offset shoulder stock, and the scope, of course, are memorable features and the reload too. In fact, that goes for all LMGs with top magazines. But it is essentially just a big metal thing. The scope is undoubtedly the feature that holds the entire look together. B tier. BAR M1918A2. The BAR is a classic World War automatic rifle. How could it not be in the game? 
It would be sacral- Bar fans, I'm happy for you and all, but 20 rounds for magazine, ain't it. But, but, my 30 out 6 my two world wars. Save it, you overly patriotic mediocrity apologist. Battlefield 5 seems to have a thing for making sure that high capacity and high RPM stay separate, with a few extreme exceptions. If you get extended magazine, you can't have the light bolt and such. Guns like the 1907 SF and the Bar are cursed from the start to have 20 round magazines only, and fixed fire rates exceeding 700 RPM. Remember the damage model. Assuming that you're hitting body shots, you need a fifth of your magazine to kill someone within 10 meters if you hit all your shots. That's a pretty short range and a pretty big if. One thing I can definitely say in favor of the bar though is that it's the most suited to close range firefights. Wait, wait, back up a bit. Did you say a fixed fire rate exceeding 700? Yeah, the bar doesn't have any light bolt specializations. It's that high by default. I thought you knew your guns. This version of the bar has a variable fire rate, and switching is as easy as using the fire selector. They incorporated this in game. Just hit the switch fire mode button. Hold on. What? Is that sub 600? Mm-hmm. Okay, 20 is still too few, but this changes things. In addition to whether or not the bipod is deployed, this gives the bar a broader scope of utility. It's worth noting that this game generally gives higher RPM guns more recoil per shot, which compounds with more shots, obviously causing recoil to happen more often. So even with the lower rate of fire, overall recoil is still higher than other LMGs that fire this fast, but it is more controllable than the higher rate of fire. So it doesn't diminish the role of those other LMGs altogether, especially with that low capacity magazine. Oh, quit beating a dead horse. You know this unique feature is far more valuable than five or 10 extra rounds in the clip. Mag. What? Magazine, not clip. You do know there's a difference, right? Why do you have to be so particular? B tier. S2-200. Now support is my most played class, and part of that is because sometimes I like building fortifications, and I often like being a dedicated tank sim. But a large contributing factor to my time spent playing support is the weapon class of MMGs alone. Medium machine guns represent perhaps the furthest extreme on the hipfire ballistic scale, all the way down here. Are there any other weapons in the game that have absolutely no value in one of their stats? You can't even aim down the sights unless you're mounted up, and the bullets fired from MMGs travel as fast as those from sniper rifles, and they have the most powerful bipod mounted states in the game. Your hipfire reticle becomes exponentially more narrow, and recoil is dampened to a ridiculous degree for such fast firing firearms. However, the S2-200 is like a class of its own. It looks like a kind of MG-34, but less refined and fed from a magazine, which makes sense considering its design history. But why have an MMG with only a 30 round magazine? At that point it's just like a weighted LMG or something. Its reload is fast because unlike most MMGs, the S2 doesn't feed from a belt, but again, LMG. When mounted it is very accurate and controllable for a gun that fires 770 rounds per minute, but if you try to use it like an MMG, you end up having to reload all the time. Think of it as a high rate of fire LMG that becomes extremely controllable when mounted on a bipod, but at all other times has osteoporosis. D tier. Don't get me wrong, I can still have fun using it because MMGs are the GOAT, but if I want an MMG for its accuracy, well. M1919A6. This was the gun alongside the Trombencino that I was immediately drawn to when I started playing Battlefield 5.0 so long ago. This is the ultimate in what MMGs could be. Feeding from a massive 250 round belt and firing at the slowest in class 600 rounds per minute, the Browning's sustained fire capabilities are comical. Now 600 RPM is no slouch, it's plenty fast to get the job done. Nonetheless, it possesses an unnatural amount of control and accuracy. This machine gun with iron sights has more claim to being a sniper rifle than most guns that can mount a scope. When mounted up on a bipod and with all of its recoil reducing specializations, your sights will barely even move when you fire, and each bullet flies at a staggering 910 meters per second. It's an automatic that can kill enemies clear across the map. It has all of those harsh downsides of its class, and its damage profile still means it will take plenty of hits to down an enemy at long range, but if you've gotten to know my tastes by now, you can probably see why I stuck with it for so long. It's the first gun that I leveled all the way up to 10. One could say that it's heavy and uncomfortable looking, but I find a much more fitting term to be brutalist. And boy is it brutal. The steady bark of its fire is fittingly intimidating as well. The reload is quite long, but if you ask me, it's long in a good way. I like complex reloads, and again, you get 250 rounds out of the deal. If you're willing to adapt your playstyle to use medium machine guns, I think you'll find the 1919A6 very rewarding. 
S tier. Madsen MG, or Danish Proto Bren. The OG! This gun is pretty old, but still gold. It's also pretty damn short for what it is. With a boxy receiver and straight walled heat shield, it looks like a chibi M1919 A6. And with stats like these, it doesn't intend to disappoint in the control department either. The Madsen has the best in class control for continuous automatic fire, at the cost of a low fire rate, only 514 rounds per minute and a slight change to the damage profile. The Madsen cannot kill in 4 body shots. It is a 5 shot kill out to 50 meters, after which it becomes a 6 shot kill and stays that way. Other LMGs and MMGs have a minimum damage of 15, requiring 7 shots to kill. The Madsen's minimum damage is 18. This smaller damage differential is much more consistent than most guns in the game, and honestly it makes my day. Although obviously this difference means that it will lose a lot of short range interactions. 25 rounds doesn't sound like enough? What are you worried about? Extended 40 round magazines have got you covered. A whole 90 degrees of magazine. Still can't get over how short that barrel is. A tier. LS26. The only reason I really started using the LS26 is because one day I picked it up in the practice range, fired it, and thought to myself, man, this gun sure sounds unique. And then I started using it. That's all it takes for me. In spite of the fact that it's only got a 20 round magazine and looks like a kid's definition of a machine gun, I love the way the LS26 sounds when firing. It's so damn robust. That's probably its most standout feature. Stats are kinda middle of the road. I'm surprised to find a lowish rate of fire with only a 20 round magazine. The LS26 is actually the third fastest firing light machine gun, but 600 is low relative to all other automatic weapon classes. It can get hip fire upgrades and has a high default muzzle velocity, so it can fill short and long range rolls. But I personally don't put a scope on it. Reloads are fast, but 20 is still too few. For some reason I found great success in using the LS26, even though it doesn't seem like anything special. I'm just gonna let this clip play out for you. Now this is defending. It's like that firing sound is a lucky charm. Lucky 7 out of 10, also known as B tier. M1922MG. This gun is a medium machine gun that fires at 770 rounds per minute, just like the S2200. But unlike the S2200, this is a real medium machine gun. It has a substantial 150 round belts, upgradable to 250, which feeds from the right side as opposed to the left, and is still rather controllable for long ranges. While I have you captive here on another MMG entry, I'd like to take this time to explain yet more about their use. The higher a rate of fire you get with MMGs, the more viable it becomes to engage in aimed hip fire. That's basically holding down the aim button when not using the bipod. It won't let you look down the sights, but it will narrow hip fire and slow you down like with normal aiming. Moving causes your reticle to widen a bit, but firing does not. Which makes firing like this more predictable, and the higher capacities make it sustainable. Using this technique gives you some defensive measures when not mounted up, at least against close range threats. And with those higher than average fire rates, it can be a really solid option for crowd control and clearing trenches, bunkers, and buildings. <laughs> the M1922 is pretty good at this and long distance fighting. 770 rounds per minute is in fact the middle ground fire rate for this class. Not exactly anything much to look at except for that irregular feed. Did you know that the 1922's empty reload is faster than the partial reload? I guess you have an excuse to shoot away your whole belt. Eight here. M1897. Our next shotgun, the iconic trench gun, with the slowest rate of fire, almost half that of the Model 37, but also the only other pump action. I guess it's like they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Its role is completely reversed from its last game Battlefield 1. There it was pretty much the equivalent of the Model 37 in this game, firing fast and having automatic slam fire. But like I said earlier, this feature no longer graces the M1897, and instead we're left with something that more resembles the Model 10, being the long range shotgun, as oxymoronic as that moniker is. Its default point of damage drop off is 8 meters, which can be extended to a whole 10 meters. Or you could instead choose to load slugs. Your respectability just increased tenfold. Slugs are single projectiles that can deal 100 damage at close range, but fall off to as little as 34 damage at max range. That one body shot range isn't very long, but your damage at a greater distance becomes much more reliable and consistent. The price you pay for consistency is that slug shotguns are kind of hard to use. In close range you're used to being able to easily hit targets, but now your aim has to be dead on, and your hip fire radius is really wide for a gun firing a single projectile that's meant to be most powerful in close range. Once you get past the one hit threshold, and trust me it won't take long, 
you realize that landing repeated accurate shots is a laborious task. Shotguns are slow to fire, have a lot of recoil, using slugs actually increases it too, the slow projectile can be hard to predict, and sight options for medium range are scant. All shotguns have a maximum 2x magnification with the buckhorn sight, but the M1897 is at a particular disadvantage. Its front sight beat is not very helpful, in fact with the buckhorn sight especially it gets in the way. So with this gun in particular loading slugs, I use the 1.25 times sight. In fact, it's one of the only guns I use the Laddy sight on at all. It sucks that I have to take a lesser magnification just to get an acceptable sight picture, but evidently it doesn't suck enough for me not to do it. However, to counter all of these range unfriendly features, we have Solid Slug. It gives a boost to headshot damage on top of the normal damage bonus. This makes the one-hit kill range much longer than expected. Shotguns with Solid Slug reward good marksmanship in adverse conditions. The difference between shot and slugs is so great that I have to reward these guns for having the option. Not only are they fun and effective at close range, but with one change the very same weapon can alter its playstyle drastically, and the inherent value in that is hard to deny. So I want to emphasize that any shotguns that take slugs will get bonus points. As for the trench gun itself, well it's quite swell. The external hammer and uncovered bolt add visual flair to its pump action operation. Its slow firing speed doesn't hurt all too much when using shot shells, just plant your reticle on target the first time. It shouldn't be too hard with this much reticle to work with. S tier. Halfway through, but don't you worry, my opinions are no less strong about the second half. As Roy Brown once said, turn this record over, you ain't heard nothing yet. VGO. So you know how I like slower firing guns that offer more damage or control? Well this gun and the one after it are exceptions. I simply love them. The Vickers gas operated has a pan magazine that starts with 75 rounds, but can be upgraded to hold 100, and it fires at 830 rounds per minute as fast as the M2 carbine. Its reloads sell the weight of those big pan mags, but are still faster than using belts. The high fire rate and pretty good capacity make the VGO a machine for completely saturating an area with bullets. Alright, here's my last info dump about general MMG use. If you run the machine gunner combat role, it can be viable to just get on a bipod and shoot the ever-loving crap out of any area you suspect may even have the slightest enemy presence. Shoot long enough and eventually enemies will be spotted, suppressed, and too scared to poke their head out for fear of losing it. Suppression allows you to see enemies over longer distances and behind limited cover. It visually helps you keep a better tab on covered enemies than if they were just spotted, whereas actual spotting makes them visible on the map. And all that's assuming you don't manage to just spray right into the enemies themselves. You can cover a large area with a great number of projectiles and provide support for the rest of your team. One thing I miss about the old mechanics in Battlefield 1 is that suppression caused enemies to become inaccurate and have excessive sway when looking through scopes. Nowadays there's nothing stopping a lone sniper from shooting at that stationary guy advertising their location with loads of machine gun fire. Even if that guy is shooting right back. Snipers are the bane of any MMG user trying to assert area dominance. Often a peek is all it takes for a sniper to hit someone who is prone and not moving. Their best efforts to kill you be damned. As the MMG user, it kind of feels unfair. I put all that effort into suppressing you and covering your immediate area with bullet holes, only for you to fearlessly raise your face and your rifle into no man's land and put a window in my skull with one shot. I've learned at this point that if I see a scope glint, it's time to pack up and move, even if I had a good position. The VGO is great at these area suppression tactics, but I recommend using the 1.25 times anti-air sight. Recoil is getting out of hand, and you could use a wider sight picture. The body of the weapon isn't much to speak of, kind of a mess as MGs tend to be. I mean, what even is that stock? But the magazine with its big strap and the way that it spins right round like a record? Well, there's something there that just pleases me. B tier, fast gun go burr. And you better not think for a second that we're slowing down for this next entry. MG42. This is the real goddamn thing. It's a gun that fires at almost a thousand rounds per minute, can carry a massive 250 round belt, and can kill in only four body shots. Why the hell isn't this the most used gun in the game? Everything I've learned about Battlefield 5 tryhards points to this being a star weapon. These people like high magazine capacities, really fast fire rates, and really low time to kill. Is it because you can't hip fire it with deadly accuracy? Is that it? Because if we factor in the shotgun meta, the only thing that seems to bind all sweaty AF weapons together is the ability to kill people really easily without ever using your sights. So that's the news of the day. The best way to be productive is to be lazy. Wouldn't want you guys straining yourselves attempting to use your brain. <sighs> I like the MG42. Its controllability and accuracy are the worst of any medium machine gun, but such things are meaningless when you have a bipod and an insane fire rate. It's the unrivaled champion of the area suppression and spray and pray tactics that I mentioned earlier. I absolutely recommend using the AA sight on the MG42, mostly because its default sights aren't very good. 
Also, this should go without saying, but for the love of God or whatever you hold to be holy, get extended belt and chrome lining. The MG42 only loads 50 round belts by default. At this insane fire rate, the belt is gone almost instantly and the gun overheats just as you spend it all. This makes your ability to put out MG fire very sporadic, and overall gives the feeling that using it is a chore. You spend more time loading than firing. Flashless propellant and especially light bolt aren't going to help you at all. A 250 round belt that reloads this fast, however, seems like it should be illegal. If you set up next to an ammo box, you can be the biggest bullet dispensary on the server. The fire rate being this high is only appropriate for the MG42. Everyone knows it as the German machine gun that shoots really fast. That plus the handling quality makes me feel less like a hypocrite for loving this gun as wholly as I do. A tier. FG42. I think that the FG42 plays more like an assault rifle than a light machine gun. It has the highest rate of fire that you're forced to have on an LMG, at a still relatively low 670 rounds per minute. For reference, that's as fast as the Sturmgewehr 15, which is the exact middle of the road for assault rifles. The recoil feels a lot harsher though. The FG42 favors aggressive, close-range tactics. It offers tighter hip fire and also a little needle to put on the end of your gun, which is nice because in a not at all unexpected move, the high rate of fire gun only has a 20 round magazine. For the most part, you'll be reloading after every kill. Aside from their use in emergencies, bayonet charges are also just fun to throw out as a Hail Mary or a flex. Yeah, I could have killed you with bullets, but then I wouldn't be much of a man, would I? This is the only MG that gets a bayonet, so just like with the variable fire rate on the bar, I am forced to give extra points to the high RPM, low capacity gun that I wouldn't have used much otherwise. This gun looks great though. Hip firing isn't really like hip firing the other guns, mostly because of the distinctive look, and it's one of my favorite LMG reloads. Well, all of these LMG reloads with eccentric magazine placement are favorites really, which is actually most of them come to think of it. What the hell was stopping old gun makers from putting their magwells where they belong? Which would be on top parallel to the barrel, like a P90. So if you take anything away from this segment other than the score, let it be that LMG style is superior. B tier. M30 Drilling. The M30 looks like your typical boomstick, but much like yours truly, its plain and unassuming appearance belies the fact that on the inside, it's actually much more special than all the others. The drilling does the least damage per pellet, a maximum of 6.3, but it fires 48 pellets per blast, whereas the rest of the shotguns all fire 32 pellets, making for a total 50% pellet increase. This puts its maximum damage per blast at just over 300, and it has the furthest maximum damage range at a whopping 9 meters by default. It may not be able to get a slug spec, but it's also unique in that it is the- oh, fuck me dude, I just bit my tongue. It may not be able to get a slug spec, but it is also unique in that it's the only shotgun that can have all three buckshot upgrades. Heavy load, penetrating shot, and internal choke. Shot distribution is tighter, maximum damage range is extended to 11 meters, and pellets penetrate players. At most other shotguns can only have two of those three at a time. With all this, each shot that comes from the M30 is devastating which is the natural solution to offset the fact that it's a break action double barrel shotgun. Since all the other shotguns have a 5 shell capacity, they were mostly balanced based on fire rate. Reloads are very frequent, and relatively long per shot when compared to other shotguns. Effective use of the M30 often consists of short periods of extreme aggression, followed by hiding and reloading. It's all about timing, because when you have those barrels loaded, it's showtime but you really don't want to get caught with your pants down when they're not loaded. It seems only natural to make the shotgun with the lowest volume of fire the one with the most power. Except DICE don't care about what is natural. They have a fancy for the unnatural. Because the Model 37 still does more total damage. How hard can it be? Just do the right thing. With the other shotguns, you had the option of slugs to take the edge off. With the M30 drilling, you have... Oh, wait. You have something that's actually kind of better. The rifle bullet is the equivalent of a bolt action rifle round, capable of killing in one headshot at any range, period. It's single shot and it can't kill in one body shot at close range, but the fact that you can have both this and buckshot in the same gun at the same time is why I can argue it's better than slugs. It's also up there with the well rod, melee, and bayonet charging for the best ways to disrespect slash style on enemy players. The buckhorn sight is good on this one, so go nuts with that incredible 2 times magnification. With this duo, you have something more reliable than slugs for close range, and still have what I would ultimately call a defensive measure for all other ranges. While individually the shotgun and rifle bullet functions are kind of weak on their own, together they help make up for each other's shortcomings, and honestly become quite versatile. It's also worth mentioning that this is the most respectable shotgun. It can't be spammed like others, and nobody will argue against that using the rifle bullet function effectively takes some skill. 
and while some might say that the gun is generic looking on its own, applying some of these weapon skins really gives it an ornate appeal. S tier. Lewis Gun. The Lewis Gun is another LMG that has a low rate of fire and is pretty easy to control. Its magazine capacity is the highest of all LMGs at 47 rounds, and can be upgraded to 97 rounds, but that robs you of some accuracy upgrades, so choose wisely. I personally don't go for that, but almost 100 rounds in an LMG, that's impressive. Again, a 3x scope works pretty well, especially with a bipod. The pan magazine is fun like the one on the VGO, but handling it is more satisfying, probably since it can be carried without a strap carry handle. The visual of pretty much putting a dish on your gun, giving it a punch, listening to the bullets rattle around, and then seeing the rotation when you fire? Well, the steampunkery makes me hard. It all just seems so cool to a retro geek like me. However, there is a modeling oversight with a magazine, or perhaps they did this just to save on resources, but the 303 cartridges can't be seen at the bottom of the magazine, it's just flat. It would be a really cool detail if they had modeled it, but it's fine I guess. The default appearance of the Lewis gun is the version generally in aircraft use, with a naked barrel, save for a Thompson foregrip. This is stupid because the Lewis gun looks objectively better with a cooling jacket. Thankfully, there are plenty of weapon skins that add it back, and those are the only weapon skins I will use. It's just so much more distinctive. The Lewis gun seems to be one of the most popular LMGs, probably due to its greater sustained fire and ease of use. That and its one-of-a-kind look make it an easy pick for me. A tier. Bren gun. The actual Bren this time. This is a lot like the Madsen, in fact almost exactly alike. The Bren is just less stable and has different damage. You know, after looking into it and pondering it, I think the Madsen's damage profile is just better. Not only because it has a higher minimum damage, but because that range is much better. Once a bullet's damage drops below 20, it would take at least 6 shots to kill. Beyond 30 meters, the Bren and all other light and medium machine guns with that same damage model do less than 20 damage per shot. The Madsen's damage doesn't drop below 20 until 50 meters. So the only time these guns have the advantage as far as shots to kill a full health enemy is the first 10 meters where they do 25 damage. How often do you, as a machine gunner, engage people within 10 meters? Does this mean just use the Madsen? No, it doesn't. The Madsen is a hell of a lot better than people realize, but Brens are also pretty cool. Again, you'll want a 3 times scope so that you can take advantage of how easy it is to control and not have to worry about your magazine getting in the way. The Bren gun's reload is also very fast, and you can get high velocity bullet specialization concurrently with recoil reduction. The diagonal foregrip makes even the gun's idle state more interesting than others as far as handling goes. It's honestly the purest picture of a World War II LMG if you ask me. A tier. 12G Automatic. My god, what a classic looking gun. So uncomplicated in its appearance, yet revolutionary in its function. In Battlefield 5, it serves as a fast firing short range shotgun though somehow slower than the pump-action Model 37. Don't ask me, I don't know, man. It seems to be a popular alternative for people who don't want to appear quite so scummy as Model 37 users. And while I want to say there's not much that separates them, that's not true. The 12-gauge auto has a reasonable damage profile and a default lethal range of 7 meters. The lesser damage for only 1 meter of extra range kind of makes it seem weak sauce on anything but a close quarters map, but it can get an extended magazine and once again, slugs. I feel fine using the big front sight on the 1.5x magnification because it's supposed to fire faster and be less accurate anyways. At least that's how I perceive it when I use slugs. For some reason that hasn't stopped me from killing at ranges shotguns shouldn't be able to. Slugs or no slugs. Once again, solid slug is really the neuron activation juice here. Continuous shots seem easier to maintain. It must be because the sights aren't being jostled by pumping or reciprocating. Reloads have more to show for themselves than other shotguns. Shells are brass rather than plastic. Empty reloads include a graceful drop of a shell into the chamber, and a finger daintily holds down the button on the receiver while loading shells into the tube, as one should. He's not just holding it fancy for no reason. There's a function to this form. This and the other semi-automatic are the two shotguns that I always use slugs with. The faster fire rate makes it less risky in close quarters. This is what I would call the second most normie shotgun, because it's seen as a Model 37 alternative with buckshot. But with slugs, it's a self-loading rifle with a wacky damage differential and high recoil. Another A tier. Damn, is it getting crowded in there or what? MG34. The last of the MMGs, I find the MG34 to be the least remarkable. It being an MMG is good, because all MMGs are good, and it can use the 75 round saddle drum magazine. This is an alright balance when comparing its fire rate and magazine size with others, and the double drum is a unique look. But when I start making comparisons... It's only 70 rounds per minute faster than the Browning, yet recoils so much more per shot. One could make the case for it being faster to reload and thus more responsive in emergencies and close quarters, 
but the MG42 reloads just as quickly. I guess the idea is that it's still fairly applicable in long range like the Browning, though having a lower capacity but more useful for other applications. I don't know, like with all things I'm sure this gun just tickles someone's sweet spot, but not mine. It does its job well, just not as well as my sweet prince the 1919A6. C tier. Type 11 LMG. This gun has a cyclic rate of 514 rounds per minute. The Bren gun and Madsen also fire at 514 rounds per minute. Three different automatic weapons in the same category with the same rate of fire. How can they get away with this? How can I allow this? These fire rates are even more samey than the SMGs, and most of them are slow. Doesn't that make me mad? No. No, it doesn't. As I've said before, light machine guns are a paragon of style. All of these guns have something special, and with the Type 11, it's this magazine. A lot of the LMGs have weird magazines, but this one is exceedingly weird. It's a detachable hopper on the side of the gun filled with stripper clips. When you go to reload, you just rip it off and then stick on a new, full one. But if you get the top-up specialization, you can use the magazine its intended way. When your remaining capacity is any multiple of 5, you just open up the hopper and put the requisite amount of clips in, and it's quite fast. The normal reload is slow itself, and I have to wonder why the clip reload couldn't be done every time, implemented in a similar way to the Perino from Battlefield 1. To speak on stats, it's slightly more accurate and less controllable than the Bren, but those differences honestly don't mean much. Whether I choose Bren or Type 11 usually comes down to which aesthetic I'm feeling that day. The Type 11's look is incredibly similar to the other Japanese LMG, the Type 97. Offset stock, heavily finned barrel, same charging handle, and mostly just a chunk of big dark metal. A tier. Well done. It's slow and steady, but... We can go slower. Shosha. You know how I like him hard-hitting, slow-firing? Well behold, the machine gun personification of that very maxim. <laughs> At a leisurely 327 rounds per minute, the Shosha hardly feels like an automatic. But its damage is insane. Three body shots to kill out to 30 meters, and a minimum damage of 22. It's actually pretty good as a high-capacity, low-recoil DMR and it has a bipod by default. But the automatic fire makes sure that you fire as fast as possible without having to spam the trigger. The Shosha feels more like an automated bullet slingshot than a machine gun. It's like you can feel the mass moving back and forth through the receiver tube as you fire, hucking out hard-hitting 8mm bullets. And that sound, ooh, the sound! It seems to be built relatively thin and light, though having a very long receiver tube, with a really far back foregrip, and a heavily curved and windowed 20 round magazine. And you thought the Madsen's 90 degrees was weird. I can see using either iron sights or the short scope for this, as it's good at range but has considerable recoil without the use of a bipod. I use the three times scope because this thing absolutely fucks. I know my description so far haven't overtly glamorized the Shosha, but it's my favorite LMG. Especially with a bipod, it can be great at long ranges. The slow cyclic rate makes coping with the recoil easier, and though kinda unexpected, it has a hipfire specialization. So it's not as bad in close quarters as you would expect, especially at such high damage. The Shosha just really does it for me. S tier. Shogun Shotgun. This is that other semi-auto. The other shotgun I almost exclusively use with slugs. It's almost a copy of the trench gun in its stats, so with buckshot it's still pretty damn good. But what possesses me to use it with slugs rather than buckshot all the time, and not the other way around? Well, the front sight is sharp, so using the buckhorn two times actually works nicely. And, wait a minute, no solid slug? If we don't have solid slug, then what do we have? Enhanced grips! It is as God intended it to be, as it was in Battlefield 1. Using shotguns with wanton abandon lives again. Gone are the days of worrying about people getting too close when you have slugs. Unlike any other, hipfire with slugs in the Shogrin is actually usable. This makes slugs more of an all-rounder, where wide hipfire and better headshot damage makes for more of a perversive quasi-sniper rifle. Normal headshot damage and tight hipfire brings the Shogrin shotgun more in line with what you'd expect out of a shotgun firing slugs. If you plan to use slugs in any shotgun, do it with this one. Unless, of course, you get that odd thrill from a solid slug like I do. The design seems pretty standard, except for the very obvious breech block slash operating mechanism. That thing is far from standard. The whole action opens up to toss out old shells and chamber new ones, chunking a significant visible portion of the gun back and forth as it slides along these rails, almost looking as though it's trying to punch your face. Recoil is violent. The reload animation shows off more of this unique mechanism, and also features brass shells, though they are less noticeable. A pretty package in all. Another one for the S tier. Well, this one ended up having a lot more high placements than I expected, and probably more than you expected too. I mean, for God's sake, look at that A tier. 
So let me summarize why that is. Supports guns are the most distinctive as a whole in the entire game. MMGs are mechanically very unique, and it helps that this unique playstyle is one that appeals to me. The LMGs are aesthetically a distinctive bunch, and every single one bears a bipod, which complements the three times scopes they can mount. And all of the shotguns, except for the Model 37, have two vastly different methods of dealing damage available to them, whether that be swapping for slugs or a two-for-one in the drillings case. Chances are that I'll be meaner for the next one, because next time on the Professor Mem Virtual Ordnance Judgment Show, we will be joined by the Weapons of Recon, my third most played class. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope that whatever you might have planned out for the rest of the day, that you have a good one. I'm Professor Mem, peace out. Hey, this is Mem with an editing room update. This is going to be more of a personal nature and less to do with the content, so stick around if you want. My medic tier list video was an unexpected success. Obviously I was proud of the effort I put in, but a creator like myself can only do so much before leaving the rest in the hands of the algorithm. That video was my first to break 1000 views, and then it broke 2000, then 3000, then 4. When I posted that video I had 11 subs, now I have over 100. And I got a multitude of uplifting and encouraging comments. I never knew whether I would see this level of success. And seeing this spike, even if it's a fluke and I never break a thousand again, has made me glad that I do what I do. Regrettably, I have a full-time job, which limits how fast I can put out videos. But the sudden success of my last video and the constant nagging from my good friend and fellow YouTuber Asiago Mateo helped me finish this video faster. So thank you.